Kate, Duchess of Cambridge and Prince William arrive in Pakistan today for a five-day tour. They have left Prince George, Princess Charlotte at home for the trip but who's looking after the children while they are away? Kate, Duchess of Cambridge and Prince William have touched down in Islamabad, Pakistan where they will embark on their most complex royal tour yet. The five-day trip will face challenges because of ongoing instability in the region and security around the royals will be particularly tight. The Cambridge's three children have stayed at home for the trip, here's who will look after them. While Prince George, 6, and Princess Charlotte, 4, have both joined their parents on royal tours in the past, the complex security picture in Pakistan means they will stay behind this time. While the security in Pakistan has improved in recent years, a terrorist attack in Pawama in February heightened tensions in the region. Security and stability are among the main problems facing Pakistan and there will be some sensitive diplomatic moments for Wills and Kate to navigate. Pakistan has been in dispute with its neighbor India over the control of Kashmir since the 1940s. Kashmir is one of the world's most heavily militarized regions and Pakistan's tensions with its nuclear-armed neighbor heightened in the summer when India imposed new restrictions in Kashmir. Prince Louis, 1, is yet to make his royal tour debut having never been abroad with his parents. He was beaten to it by his little cousin Archie Harrison who joined his parents Meghan Markle and Prince Harry in South Africa last month. However, little Louis will have to hold on to make an official trip abroad with his parents as he too has been left behind while they spend five days in Pakistan. Who will look after Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis? Princess Charlotte, 4, joined her big brother George in St. Thomas's Battersea in September and they will both be busy at school in London this week. Their live-in Norlin nanny, Spaniard Teresa Maria Teresa Turian Balralla will no doubt be on hand to care for the Cambridge Tots during the week and handle the school run. She was first employed by William and Kate in 2014 and is now a firm fixture of the Cambridge family. Maria will likely not be alone as Kate's mother, Carol Middleton, 64, often lends a hand with child care too. Carol and Kate's father Michael, 70 often pitch in with looking after their grandchildren and have close relationships with Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis. They took care of George and Charlotte this summer while Wills and Kate competed in a charity boat race in Cowes. Grandmother Carol told The Telegraph how she goes to special lengths for her grandchildren during the festive period. She said she has as many Christmas trees as possible at home including in the grandchildren's room so so that they can decorate it themselves. While the Cambridge brood doesn't get to travel abroad this time, the move was made with good reason, considering the scene in Pakistan. Royal expert Richard Fitzwilliams told Express.co.uk, their visit to Pakistan is a complex tour owing to logistical and security considerations and they will not be accompanied by any of their three children, two of whom are currently at school. Precise details of William and Kate's Pakistan engagements will not be revealed ahead of time because of the potential security risks. However, they will visit a string of community projects and meet political and business leaders around the country. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge began a five-day tour of Pakistan last night but still managed to do the school run before embarking on the sensitive diplomatic mission. Royal tours rarely come as tricky as their visit to the Muslim Commonwealth nation, which is anxious to show the world it has overcome a terrorism problem that once threatened to turn it into a failed state. But in between mastering their briefing papers, taking security advice, and preparing for what promises to be a grueling five days under the spotlight, William and Kate still ensured that their departure from Raf Brise Norton in Oxfordshire for an Air Force base in Rawalpindi was timed to allow them to drop their two older children, Prince George and Princess Charlotte, off at their private school in Battersea, South London, yesterday morning. Aides confirmed that the departure time had been set with the school run in mind before their Raf A330 Voyager plane set off for Newark on Pakistani Air Force Base, close to the capital, Islamabad. It was an arrival worth waiting for, in a nod to the conservative traditions of their hosts. Kate, 37, wore a stunning aqua blue outfit by one of Diana, 
Princess of Wales's favourite couture firms, Catherine Walker, when she and William stepped off their plane after a 7 hours and 45 minute flight. They were met at the foot of the plane by Pakistan's Federal Minister for Foreign Affairs Shah Mahmood Qureshi and his wife and Britain's High Commissioner to Pakistan Thomas Drew. Gates' stylish but modest outfit looked like a traditional Pakistani shawl work Amis but was intended to be a tribute to local dress rather than an imitation. The future queen is expected to wear a series of outfits paying subtle tribute to Pakistan during her stay but will avoid sporting a headscarf unless she visits a mosque. The couple are said to be hugely excited about the trip, the first royal tour to Pakistan since Prince Charles and Camilla came on an official visit in 2006. In a speech to the great and good of Pakistani society at an event in Islamabad on Tuesday night, the second in line to the throne will set out how they hope to strengthen ties between the two nations and help Pakistan convince the world that it has largely overcome Islamic fundamentalist terrorism that brought the country to its knees a decade ago. William, 37, is expected to say, Pakistan is the world's fifth largest country by population. It has an unbelievably diverse geography that spans deserts to glaciers and everything in between. It is the birthplace of the youngest ever Nobel Peace Prize winner. We share unique bonds and so it will always be in our best interests for Pakistan to succeed. Not least because of the 1.5 million people living in the UK with Pakistani origin and the fact that the UK is one of the biggest investors in Pakistan's economy. You can always rely on the UK to keep playing an important role as a key partner and friend. British and Pakistani diplomats say Pakistan is now a much safer country than it was a few years ago but the couple's efforts to help it portray itself as a nation once again welcoming tourists is slightly at odds with the tight security surrounding this tour. Details of engagements are only being released on the day, a system used regularly in Northern Ireland and a huge security operation involving 1,000 police and the Pakistan military swung into action to protect the royal couple and their entourage yesterday. During the tour, William and Kate will meet Pakistan's Oxford-educated Prime Minister Imran Khan, the former international and Worcestershire and Sussex County cricketer who was a friend of Diana, Princess of Wales. William has known Imran, a heartthrob for many British women who was married to socialite Jemima Goldsmith from 1995 to 2004, since he was a child. His mother visited the former cricketer in Lahore in 1996 and 1997, shortly before her death, to help raise funds for a cancer centre he built in the city. On this visit William is expected to honour his mother's humanitarian work. Imran, now 67 agreed to act as a go-between for Diana in her two-year romance with the British Pakistani heart and lung surgeon Hasnat Khan, a distant cousin. In 2000, he said that he believed Diana's ill-fated 1997 summer romance with Playboy Dottie Fade had been designed to make the surgeon jealous and reconsider his reluctance to marry Diana. She had been involved with him for two years and she had wanted to marry him. It was clear that she was very deeply in love with Dr. Hasnot and I just don't think she could have got over it that quickly, he said. I had it in my mind that I was going to talk to him. At least to find out what was the reason, for his reluctance to marry her, because maybe there was some reason that she wasn't aware of. Maybe I could speak to him because having married someone from outside my culture, if there was something that could be cleared or some advice that could be given, then maybe I would be able to help before he could do so, however, Diana and Dottie were killed in a Paris car crash. Before that could happen, that tragic incident took place, he said in a television documentary. Although Britain wants to use the visit to praise Pakistan as a bulwark against Islamic fundamentalist terrorism, the country has often been accused of trying to play in both ways. It supported America's war on terror after the September 11 attacks but only after its military and shadowy intelligence services helped create the Taliban in neighboring Afghanistan. They also trained al-Qaeda militants fighting with Osama bin Laden, who was finally killed by U.S. Navy SEALs in May 2012 after being discovered hiding in a compound in Abbottabad, a Pakistani city 75 miles north of Islamabad. The royal couple will visit Islamabad as well as Lahore, 
the mountains in the north and regions bordering Afghanistan in the west but the precise locations will not be made public until the day of the visits for security reasons. When Charles and Camilla visited in 2006 the country was less safe than now, according to British and Pakistani diplomats. In the ensuing years, it was engulfed by terrorism, as the Pakistani Taliban took control of parts of the north of the country and extremists carried out assassinations and suicide attacks throughout the country. In 2008 a truck bomb killed 54 people at the Marriott Hotel in Islamabad where royal aides had met British journalists covering Charles and Camilla's trip two years earlier. Earlier this month a senior royal aide said, what happens in Pakistan matters on the streets of the UK. It's one of the most important relationships that the UK has. In a statement on October 4, Christian Jones, the couple's communications secretary, said the visit would focus on climate change, access to quality education and security in Pakistan. He said, this will be their Royal Highness's first official visit to Pakistan. While the Duke and Duchess's program will pay respect to the historical relationship between Britain and Pakistan, it will largely focus on showcasing Pakistan as it is today, a dynamic, aspirational and forward-looking nation. This is the most complex tour undertaken by the Duke and Duchess to date, given the logistical and security considerations. The statement said the couple would meet a variety of people, including leaders from government, business and the charity sector, inspiring conservationists and well-known cultural figures and sports stars. William and Kate will also visit programs that empower young people, especially those that give girls and women access to education, and said they looked forward to spending time with young Pakistanis. They will also see how different communities are responding to climate change, and are due to spend time looking at the complex security picture of the region. Their five-day visit comes soon after a ten-day royal tour of Africa by the Duke and Duchess of Sussex.